In February of 1988, a set of human remains was discovered in a nylon suitcase inside a dumpster in Jenkins County, Georgia. The victim was a woman who had been wrapped in plastic and duct tape. She had been dead for anywhere in the range of four to seven days, and the cause of death was asphyxiation. Fingerprints and dental records were compared to missing persons in the area, but there were no matches. Computer-generated sketches were shown to the public, and details about the case were entered in the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System. Over the years, more evidence was collected from the suitcase and the woman's remains, but none of it provided any leads. The case eventually went cold and the woman became known as the Jane Millen Doe, or alternatively, the Jenkins County Jane Doe. Finally, this year, 2023, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation submitted forensic evidence to Othram for more advanced DNA testing. Othram managed to develop a comprehensive DNA profile of the woman, which generated new leads for the investigators. These leads eventually gave the woman's name back. The Jenkins County Jane Doe was actually a woman named Shang Eun Kim, who had come to the United States from Korea in 1981. She had lived in Hinesville, Georgia until her death in 1988 when she was 26 years old. The circumstances of her death are still a mystery and her killer remains in the shadows. Hopefully this will change soon, but until it does, Chong Eun Kim's killer walks free amongst us. Megan Smith was just a small child when her mother dropped her off at a relative's house in 1984. Megan's mother never returned to pick up her daughter. On February 18th of that same year, a blonde woman's body was found floating face down in a canal in Davie, Florida. Without substantial evidence, the Davie Jane Doe's case quickly went cold. However, this year, 2023, the Davie Police Department finally made a break in the case. They used DNA samples from bone fragments to match Jane Doe with her living relatives, and they discovered that she was Megan Smith's missing mother, Lori Jane Kiersey. Before her disappearance in 1984, Lori had gotten a divorce from her first husband and then proceeded to marry a member of an unnamed crime family in Boston, Massachusetts. It seems highly likely that someone in the crime family was responsible for Lori's death. This theory is supported by the fact that she was killed via strangulation. Unfortunately, her killer remains unidentified and free. With any luck, this will change at some point in the near future. Grave number 328 on the Paz Celestial Block in I2 Municipal Cemetery, Sao Paulo, Brazil. This grave has housed the remains of an unidentified blonde woman for 50 years. On April 19th of 1973, the woman's body was found naked on Estrada Parque. Her body showed signs of torture and there were six gunshot wounds in her back. She appeared to have been around 30 years old at the time of her death. The Brazilian civil police could not explain what had happened to the woman, and her case went cold. However, the case had gotten national media coverage and inspired urban legends such as the blonde in the bathroom. After a television program about Jane Doe aired, a family contacted the channel and told them about a young blonde woman who had lived in Matau at the time. This woman was named Odete Fontes, and she had an affair with a married merchant from Itu. According to her family, Odete fell hopelessly in love with the merchant, but the merchant did not feel the same way about Odete. Apparently, he wanted to move away in order to save his marriage, and Odete traveled to Itu to convince him otherwise, but she never returned. 
the Fontes family suspected the E2 Jane Doe was actually Odette. At the same time as this theory was being suggested, a second family came forward claiming that the unidentified woman might be Loni Kelbert. According to the Kelbert family, Loni moved to Sao Paulo in the 60s because the city offered better opportunities. Loni regularly visited home and on Christmas in the early 70s, she promised to come home for Easter, but she never did and her family never saw her again. Loni's sister, Ingrid, sent a picture of Loni to the channel, which was passed around to everyone who had seen the corpse. Almost everyone who saw the photo said they were 90% certain Jane Doe was actually Loni Kelbert. Nobody had recognized a photo of Odette Fontes. The legal department of the channel is currently trying to exhume Jane Doe's body in order to confirm that she really is Loni Kelbert. It seems as if her identity has finally been restored, but the identity of her killer is still unknown. Hopefully this new revelation will lead to an arrest. In 1968, two boys were playing in a drainage ditch in Eaton, Ohio when they discovered a set of skeletal remains. The authorities confiscated the remains and began an investigation, assuming the skeleton belonged to a woman. Without much information and given the lack of advanced DNA testing at the time, the case stalled quickly. In 2019, a woman told the police that she believed the Jane Doe was her missing relative, Mary Jane Croft Van Gilder. The police exhumed the remains to perform DNA testing on them, and what they found was shocking. For 51 years, the police had assumed the unidentified remains belonged to an elderly woman, but their testing revealed that the skeleton had actually belonged to a man. The DNA samples taken from the skeleton matched a man named Albert Frost, who had gone missing in 1963 from Hamilton, Ohio. The corpse had been missing its right forearm and hand, and flooding in the area had disturbed the remains from their original resting place in a shallow grave. Despite the Preble County Jane Doe being identified after so many years, a few questions still remain. For example, who was responsible for the death of Albert Frost? What really happened to Mary Van Gilder? Was she murdered or did she simply have an accident that's never been discovered? Sadly, we may never know the answers to these questions. Certain mysteries stay mysteries forever. On June 13th of 1973, two fishermen found the dead body of a woman in the San Diego Bay. Jane Doe's torso and arms were in an orange suitcase, her head was wrapped in a green plastic bag, and her legs were floating a short distance away. Much like all of the other cases in this video, there wasn't much information available at the time and the case quickly went cold. However, in 2020, Othram used DNA samples from Jane Doe to identify her as 29-year-old Arminda Grangela Rodriguez de Silva Ribeiro. Arminda was born in Portugal and her family moved to a region of New Jersey with a large Portuguese population. She was married, had two children, and worked at a trailer fabrication company in Newark. It is currently unknown what her connection to San Diego was, but the investigation into her death is still ongoing. Hopefully her friends and family can receive some answers soon. <laughs> 